Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game, hopefully. And in today's episode, I'm going to share something with you that I've recently just kind of stumbled back upon or revisited or maybe just thought about in a different way. Just how simple everything can become when you apply this. Let's go! Alright, so as you'll notice, I'm in full golf attire today. I was totally ready to go play golf. I go drive out to the course, pull everything out of the back of the car, I load it up onto the cart, I go up to the clubhouse, starts pouring down rain. So, long story short, I just think it wasn't meant to be for me today, but since I'm already in my golf gear, it's a perfect time to make a video. Let's go out to the lab and get one cranked out. Now I apologize in advance, I'm not going to be able to hit this direction today. I'm working in the house, you can see the 2x4s I've got out here. I've got some stuff over behind this. If I was to hit into that direction and hit it into that tarp, it would not be a good thing. I'll just make a swing here and, and let's just see if maybe, if you can pick up, is there anything different? Because honestly, I haven't even looked at this swing on video. I've been working now for a couple of months with the Sean Clement Wisdom in Golf approach and with that I feel like I've gotten a lot of things ingrained according to to a lot of top golfers and, and, and a lot of things you read or you watch when you're practicing that's when you're supposed to be learning those movements and ingraining those but then when you go out on course you're supposed to just somehow be able to forget about all of that work and all of those positions and movements and everything in the swing that you've been working on, no matter what system you're using. And you should just be thinking about the shot, the target, your intention, where you want to strike the golf ball, things like that. And I've always had the hardest time in making that transition and I end up playing practice on the course as I'm sure many of you out there do. So just take a look at this swing. Does it look any different? Let's slow it down a little bit. Let's see if I can swing a little bit slower. There. That felt like that was about half speed. All right? So what's different? What is this video about? What is it that I'm telling you? All right, it's really simple. It's really simple. The sweet spot of the club, as we all know, is somewhere about in here, on the middle of your club face, on your irons. And we all know that we want to contact the ball in the sweet spot. That's like, Duh. everybody understands that. Often, I think I might have read this somewhere, a lot of times we're thinking about the leading edge of the club and getting it square. Now, if you're thinking about the leading edge, you may actually end up topping it or releasing. See the shaft, shaft angle here? You might be releasing it too soon, leading to thin shots, inconsistent shots, hitting the equator, fatting and hitting behind the golf ball. To get that shaft lane that everybody covets, I find that focusing my mind on trying to actually apply the sweet spot to that spot on the back of the ball, rather than thinking about just getting the leading edge square and contacting the back of the ball this way, I want it to come in more like this and apply, see that shaft lean? See how the shaft is leaning? apply the sweet spot to that spot on the back of the ball. So when it marries up, it looks something like that. You see how that shaft has to lean in? My hands need to be significantly more ahead of the golf ball at the time of impact. And I think that AJ Bonner, he talked in one of his videos about taking the top of the club, this is the leading edge, this is the top line, taking the top of the club over the bottom, like that. And of course, that sounds like a physical impossibility, but it's an intention. It's a, it's a feel. It's a thought process. It's something that's not mechanical. It doesn't deal with something internally that you're focusing on. It's talking about something outside of your body that you're trying to control. The club, the lean, the golf ball, the target. Those are all things that are external. I'll be doing a video on that one soon here coming up. But for now, coming in and my hands are leading. That's one thing. But if you're really, when I'm having trouble with the tops and the skulls, I really want to feel like my hands really get out and ahead of. And with Sean's method, he says that as long as your intention is to throw the club at the target out there, then this will happen automatically. But for those of us that may have some struggles with that, when I take the club away and I bring it back, if I feel like I'm trying to apply See how I have to lean the shaft in order to make that sweet spot line up with the back of the ball. Now that's completely de-lofted this club. And in normal circumstances, somebody who doesn't have an issue with shaft lean 
you're gonna hit a low squirter. For somebody like me who has a tendency to flip or you know just come come out of it and, and, and we're thinking too much about the leading edge, applying that sweet spot to the ball like that really kind of starts to play with your mind, right? And if you want to hit a lower shot, then you need to be thinking more about a spot, not necessarily on the back of the ball, but more on the top back of the ball to where you get even more shaft length. If you want to play a draw, you're applying that sweet spot on this side. So case in point, I'll try and hit one normal. Just like that. And that's as pure as it gets. I don't think I can hit it any more pure than that, that feel. All right, so now let me try and play one that is a lower trajectory. Let's try and knock it down. Now, common knowledge would be to play a little more back in your stance and just to kind of swing easy to take the spin off to play a low shot. So you can think about a lot of things mechanically. You can get lost in where your hands are, where your arms are, keeping my weight on this side, doing this, don't turn that much. All these different mechanical internal thoughts Eliminate that with external thoughts. Same sweet spot on the golf club. Now I'm going to apply that sweet spot on the back of the ball, but toward the upper top of the ball on the back. And that's very much the wisdom and golf method. Yeah, yeah, it feels like if I swing now, I'm definitely going to hit that part of the ball. All right? And then it comes out lower. And then your finish, your takeaway, your backswing, your follow through, all of that starts to take care of itself. And it gets really simple. So then if I wanna hit a draw, I know I wanna hit it on the back side of the ball. I know I wanna catch it on the way down. And I know that I wanna catch it more toward my side of the golf ball, right? So then I'm just gonna kinda of set up and get my intention to feel that way. And then my finish, my swing, my finish, everything, it all becomes a byproduct of the intention. So I'm no longer thinking about the form that I have or positions in the swing or do my hands look right or is my body in this spot. In that sense, all these mechanical thoughts, they all kind of fall away. You don't have to worry so much about trying to get into the correct positions. You will naturally get into your positions. I will get into my natural positions simply because I'm thinking externally. The intention creates that. And a lot of this speaks to Zen golf as well, I should say. But let's just try one more and then I'll wrap it up. All right, back of the ball, right there. In these practice sessions that I've been having recently, I have no mechanical thought at all in the sense that I don't know what my takeaway looks like. I don't know where I am at the top. I don't know if I have a bowed wrist or a cupped wrist. I don't know if I'm coming across the line because I have laser focus on what part of the ball I want to contact and then making sure to apply. Apply is just a great word also. Internal vocabulary, it, it cannot be, it, it can't be important enough. Your internal vocabulary, what you say to yourself, the words that you use, they're super important. So I'm trying to apply the sweet spot to that part of the ball. But at the end of the day, you got to get it simplified to a point to where you're not so bound up in your own mind trying to think about where you are in space, what your body's doing. Forget what your body's doing and think about what you want the sweet spot to do to that golf ball. If you can purify it down to that, the rest of your movements will become automatic. They'll become innate. They will be natural to you and it's not going to look like other people's swings. I'm, I'm sure that my swing looks nothing like a lot of other people's and, and somebody's going to get on this video and they're going to say, oh, you're way out of position here. You're across the line. Look at this. This is terrible. Your power package is all mixed up. Look at P4. You're, you're terrible at P4. And that's fine. But if I'm striking the ball, the ball is the ultimate test. The ball flight, if it's good ball flight, if it's what I need, if it's what I want, if it's in the direction of my target and it's strong, it's powerful, it's repeatable, it's consistent then who cares what the swing looks like? You free yourself of all that stuff, get rid of it. Just start thinking about using the tool in the way that you understand how to use the tool. And the more you apply that tool to it, the more you hammer nails, the more you, you squeeze balls through door frames, the more you cut grass in the direction of the target, 
Whatever your intention is, the more you do that, the better you will become at it naturally as long as you don't get in your own way. Guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Click thumbs up down below if you like this video. Be sure to leave me some comments, and I'll see you next time.